These two men are at the forefront of a healthcare initiative which has never been tried before here and which speaks volumes about the mental health crisis on the streets of England. Police officer Dave Wadsworth and mental health nurse Furkan Mia are on their way to a woman's house. She's committed no crime, but they fear she might. She thinks people are coming out of her television set and she's got young children at home. Uh, Furkan and I have had a look at her health information and we know that she has a diagnosis of paranoid schizophrenia. Uh, these symptoms would fit in with that. Uh, and we're going out just to uh, assess her current state uh, and look at the risk to herself and to other people. When they arrive at the house, the police job is to facilitate the nursing and answer a cry for help. The alternative, perhaps not here, but certainly in some cases, would be too tragic to contemplate. Here, as elsewhere in England, a full 25% of all police time is spent dealing with people with mental health problems after something's gone wrong. And the reason why this pilot is so interesting is that effectively it's preventative policing, trying to get on top of a problem before the criminal justice system has to get involved. The police recognise they can't possibly do this alone, and that's where places like this become so vital. Day centres run by the mental health charity Mind for people like Karim, a paranoid schizophrenic since his 20s, the difference between stability and probably a prison cell. For many years, we sat in the corner and died. I've had 40 years of um, mental health and I've seen the difference. Now it's get out there, do stuff, positive, whatever the situation is. Mind makes the obvious point that better funding for such a large problem would actually save the country money. There are significant numbers of people who fall out of work because of mental health problems. In fact, uh, sickness absence um, as a result of mental health problems is the biggest cause of sickness absence in the UK economy. So there's a strong business case for really taking this issue seriously. Yet they say projects they run, like IT courses and ways of rehabilitating mentally ill people back into work, are now themselves at risk of cuts. If uh, we lose funding, then our service will close, so they will have to find other services, I presume, in, in the area. Services may well be of a very poor quality. Campaigners often make the point that if politicians could see what goes on inside the minds of the mentally ill, then none of these problems would arise. Certainly mental illness imprisons the person. A police cell is surely no place to put them. Lawrence Lee, Al Jazeera, Leicester.